Gaines, bro. Welcome to the video. Yo, Patrick, what do you think about my copyrighted chocolate banana post-workout shake? Banana, almond milk, and protein powder. It's kind of basic, man. A four out of ten. Yeah, for real? We're gonna have to fire this guy, man. Yo, this, the banana was frozen beforehand to give it the perfect consistency. Can I get like a, a six out of ten, maybe? I'll bump it to a five for the frozen banana. All right, we'll keep you. We won't fire you yet. Anyway, check it out, man. We're about one month into this whole quarantine lockdown situation right now. And for me, the scariest part is that it's starting to feel like the new normal, which is super shitty. And, you know, the deeper and deeper we've gotten into it, the more and more I've caught myself doing a few bad habits more and more frequently. And I can tell that these things are making me mentally weaker. They're hurting my self-confidence. They're making it harder to stay focused and be productive. So listen up because I can pretty much guarantee that at least one or two of these bad habits applies to you too. All right, number one, don't fall into the outrage news trap. Look man, it's no secret that when I make a YouTube video, I try and do it in a way that keeps you coming back for more. Like that's why I have dope editing in every video. That's why I try and create useful content that you can actually apply in your life. And that's why I try and keep it real with you guys all the time. What you might not realize is that news outlets, they're doing the same thing. Like they might not have dope editing. They probably don't keep it real with you too often, but they want you to keep coming back because that's how they make money. And unfortunately, the way they do this is when you watch the news or read the news, they want to elicit an emotional response out of you. And the way they do this is they try and play up on your political views and tell you exactly what you want to hear and also make you angry at everyone who doesn't agree with you. So for example, if you kind of believe this whole coronavirus situation is overblown and like, yes, people are sick and dying, but the greater danger is to the economy, then you're more likely to go to a conservative news outlet that's gonna give you facts to prove that you're right. They're gonna talk about all the numbers of how bad the economy is right now. And not only that, they're gonna show a lot of information about the spread of the virus that makes it seem not as serious. And this is gonna make you angry at all the people out there who think that it's a big deal and who think we should be staying home right now. Or maybe you think that this pandemic is extremely serious and businesses need to stay closed as long as possible to kill the spread of the virus. Well, you're more likely to watch a liberal news outlet that's probably gonna show a lot of statistics about how many people are dying and that's gonna make you feel like you're right, but they're also gonna kinda demonize all the people out there who aren't wearing masks and staying home and it's gonna make you angry at those people. The point is, it doesn't matter what side you're on or what side I'm on, buying into all of this fucking outrage, it's just pointless. You know, at the beginning of the pandemic, I was reading a bunch of news articles every single day and I was super anxious and angry at the world just all of the time. And as I realized this, I've cut down my news consumption. I probably just skim through the headlines like once per week. And as a result, I'm way happier. I'm a lot more confident in myself and I'm a lot more focused on my goals and just getting a lot more shit done. And honestly, I recommend you do the same thing. Stop watching so much fucking news because it's just gonna make you upset and anxious. And the reality is, unless you're about to commit your life to politics or political activism, you can't change any of this shit anyway. Y'all know I had to get all dressed up to go to the grocery store. 
but there's just something about you know putting on a fresh outfit about once a week it just mentally makes me feel better plus julia gets a little bit thirsty <laughs> i like it i like it we got the yeezys on black ripped jeans all black outfit and maybe the most important part the black belt when you got the belt on it keeps the jeans in the right place you don't see the butt crack and that's why i decided to partner with Anson Belt to be the sponsor of today's video. Now, the cool thing about Anson Belts is not only do they all have a sleek, masculine look to them, but they have something called micro-adjust technology. So if you look at the belt, there's actually no holes on here. Instead, the backside has these little ridges on them, so when you put the belt on, let me know if y'all can hear this. It literally clicks into the exact perfect fit, so it doesn't matter if I gain weight or lose weight, it always fits perfectly. Plus, the belts actually detach from the buckles, which means you can mix and match them. So if you take a look inside my little box right here, you can see I got my brown strap, obviously I got my black strap, and then I have a few different buckles, so that no matter what outfit I'm wearing, I can always find the right combination. And the cool thing is that right now you can get a box like this with either three straps and two buckles, or three buckles and two straps for less than $100, plus free shipping in the United States. If you wanna take advantage of this deal and upgrade your belt game, just click that first link in description. I'm the cart for the day. Julia's really good at, uh, at holding stuff. He calls me Packy. I, I actually do call her Packy. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I'm like, I'm kind of getting used to wearing the mask. Like at first I couldn't stand it, but now like I'm not constantly trying to take it off my face and adjust it. Yeah, I feel like breathing wise, like I'm taking like less breaths and just like trying to, cause it feels weird, but seeing everyone else in it, it just feels like the new norm. What are you talking about breathing? Don't huh? you breathe less? like? I still gotta breathe. <laughs> Seriously, man, more Tiger King. Yo, if y'all are sick of watching Tiger King and hearing about Tiger King, give the video a thumbs up. All right, bad habit number two is getting addicted to the escape. So obviously right now we're living in kind of a boring time, right? We can't leave the house much, we can't see other people. And as a result, I think it's normal that we want to escape our reality. You know, for example, I think me and Julia have probably watched like eight different shows on Netflix and Hulu. I'm playing video games again. You guys know I'm playing Call of Duty. I haven't played video games in years. And I know from talking to other people that a lot of people are drinking more than normal, smoking more than normal. You know, those are different ways to alter your reality. And I think Pornhub right now, or one of the big porn websites is even offering free memberships because they're trying to get people hooked in. And look, man, I don't necessarily think these things are bad in moderation. You know, the problem is if you can't control them and they control you. So every day you feel like you have to sit down and play six hours of Call of Duty or you have to watch Netflix for three hours. You have to get drunk or stoned every single day. At that point, obviously, it's a problem, right? And what I've noticed in my own experience is that the more I escape reality, the more I want to escape reality. So if I'm playing Call of Duty, I just want to play one more game, and then one more game, and then one more game. Or if I'm watching Netflix at night, I just want to watch one more show before I go to bed. And this can turn into a downward spiral pretty quickly. So the rule that I've created for myself is I get to enjoy these leisure activities, but only after 6 p.m. each day. Before 6 p.m., I have to film videos, edit videos, maybe work on some edge designs, do some phone calls. I got to stay productive, but once it gets to be 6 p.m., I can enjoy myself. And the cool thing about this is it actually motivates me to work harder earlier in the day because I know I have some time to chill at the end of the day and I actually enjoy that chill time more. I enjoy those Call of Duty games a lot more than if I was just playing all day long and then it's just another fucking mindless game. The only exception to this would be watching porn. I think that watching porn is best done not even in moderation. It's best just not to do it at all just because it can mess you up sexually. Uh, like I can tell you from my past experience, it can definitely cause some low grade erectile dysfunction. It's, uh, it's kind of sad if you think about it too. Like you're getting addicted to watching other people have sex. If you're someone who's not that sexually experienced, it's gonna kill your motivation to actually go out and meet real girls. So yeah, I recommend doing it not at all. If somehow you have the discipline to do it just like once a week, then maybe it doesn't have as bad as an effect. But yeah, it's gonna be easier just to cut it out. Hold up homie, last wait a minute. Lately, y'all ain't even pay no visits. I can still hear the hate of critics saying he ain't gonna make it, is he? Lately, I developed laser vision. Yeah, I burnt the people in their cruel intentions. Crazy, you trying to play me? Boy, you wouldn't even make the scrimmage. Get your ass up and pass up the limits. Got these new rappers. In the last video that me and Julia made a pizza, 
There was a few people in the comments that I need to talk to. A few of y'all said, what are you doing cutting a pizza with scissors? There's something wrong with you. And they said dirtier things than that. But bro, don't knock it if you haven't tried it because I've cooked a lot of pizzas in my day. I've tried using those rollers. I've tried using knives. This is made for cutting a pizza. You get a clean cut every time. So try it out, bro, and stop hating. We also got a plate of green beans because of health. And not one. Boy, now we got two hungry dogs quietly sitting down there. Quiet, quietly sitting down there because they smell the gangs. How's that cauliflower crust working out for you? It's kind of gross, actually. <laughs> it's not as good as yours. I'm glad. I'm glad you didn't try and defend it. It, <laughs> like, it looks like, yeah, it looks like trying to be healthy. It looks like cardboard. <laughs> All right, number three is what I like to call the quarantine excuse. <laughs> Tell me if this sounds familiar, bro. There's something you kind of been meaning to do, but right now you're putting it off and you're telling yourself, I I'll do that, you know, once quarantine's over. F for me, you guys know, back at the end of 2019, my biggest New Year's resolution was to work on my diet. I said every single meal, I'm gonna have fruits or veggies. And after a few months, I, I kind of fell off and I realized recently that my diet, it's been pretty poor again. But I've been telling myself, you know, once quarantine ends, I'll take care of it then. I mean, granted, I just had some green beans, so I'm trying, I'm trying to do a little bit better. But my question is, for you, what have you been using the quarantine excuse for? What have you been putting off? You know, maybe you've been looking for a job or you got fired and you've been telling yourself, ah, you know, once quarantine's over, ah, then I'll look for a job. Oh, the gyms are closed. I'm not gonna work out for now. Once quarantine's over, you know, then I'll start hitting my workouts again. So right now, I'm calling you out, bro. And I'm calling myself out too. No more quarantine excuses. I'm gonna get back on my diet, fruits and veggies every meal. I want you to get back on whatever you're supposed to be doing too. Because the truth is, if you give in to the quarantine excuse, like realistically, what do you think is gonna happen after quarantine? I know I'd probably just tell myself, well, you know, it looks like summer is almost over. I might as well just wait until, until next year, until next summer to work on my diet. And you know, bro, you know you'd probably be doing the same thing. I know it might not be the most ideal time to apply for jobs. It's not the easiest time to get a good workout in. But you know what? That doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. Even if the, the conditions are not optimal, that doesn't mean you still cannot figure out a way to get it done. You can still apply to five jobs every single day. Maybe they're not the best jobs right now, but it's something. You can still get a body weight workout or buy some home equipment like I bought, and you can still get a workout in, bro. Come on. And of course, they are still selling fruits and vegetables at the grocery store. So I got no excuses. We're about to check out this uh, The Last Dance documentary about uh, Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls. And something that I've been vocal about, you may know, is that I say LeBron was greater than Michael Jordan. So I just want to set the record straight here. I think Michael Jordan was more dominant in his time than LeBron is in his time. But I think that the, the league, the skill and the athleticism and the strength of the league has just developed so much since the 90s when Jordan was playing. And LeBron is dominating to a great extent in today's game. And I think if you match them up across their eras, LeBron would be a better straight up player. Does that kind of make sense what I'm saying? Yeah. Anyway, I'm pumped to watch this thing. I've heard amazing reviews. I'm a massive NBA fan. I'm going to wrap the video up here on the balcony. If you made it to the end, I appreciate you, bro. Give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, go ahead, click subscribe and turn notifications on because I drop two videos every single week and you do not want to miss them. I will talk to all of y'all in the next video. Stay beastly. When it all goes down, I'm gonna run this town. I am my soul